Welcome to the intro video of the year 11 into year 12 bridging work for those wishing to study A-level chemistry at Devizes School. I'm going to run through what the course entails, which some of you may have seen a bit of if you came to open evening, and then what you can expect in terms of bridging work. So the subject content is split into three areas, physical chemistry, organic chemistry, and inorganic chemistry. And the graphic on the screen there is to represent that chemistry is sometimes known as the central science, because you can see it's linked to so many different areas of science and uh, the careers and industries linked to those. So the first area is physical chemistry. And it's the study of how matter behaves on a molecular and atomic level and how chemical reactions occur. It's an area of science for those of you who are constantly asking why. So why um, certain things behave like they do, why certain structures exhibit certain properties. Um, so the physical chemists often work closely with uh, material scientists to develop new materials or find new uses for those materials and they tend to use a lot of mathematical uh, analysis with huge um, data sets um, to find out more about certain materials or compounds than uh, you may see at a face value. Uh, the next area is organic chemistry. Um, so it's defined as the study of um, carbon containing compounds um, but really it's more than that because it is absolutely everywhere. Um, our planet is filled with carbon-based life forms, so it's the study of life itself. Um, but not all carbon reactions are organic, so you could also um, consider it as um, the study of molecules containing carbon and hydrogen um, bonds, and the reactions associated with those. Um, typically, organic chemists um, are conducting research and development. So that could be developing new drugs, um, or as you can see there, formulating a shampoo that results in silkier hair, those sort of things. Um, and um, yeah, constantly researching, looking, new, looking for new ways um, to um, improve um, our lives in this side of things. And the final area was inorganic chemistry. So this is everything that's not organic, basically. Um, typically, it's the non-carbon hydrogen containing compounds, which include metals, salts, and minerals. Um, there is some overlap with organic chemistry. This is known as organometallic um, chemistry. Um, but typically it is bonded, uh, a metal directly bonded to a carbon atom. Um, in the chemistry is used in the study of catalysts, coatings, fuels, things like that, superconductors. Um, and a number of different careers associated uh, there also. But again, it's research and ways to make um, new materials, improve current materials or improve processes um, um, for the benefit of society. So let's uh, have a look at how the course is assessed. So this is um, the year 12 assessment or AS level. So for most of you, this would be um, your mock exams in year 12. Um, Really, we have some people who decide just to sit the AS and you'll do the official AS exams, but for most of you, it will just be um, a mock. So you can see there's two papers. And you've got physical chemistry on paper one with um, inorganic chemistry topics plus practical skills. Hour and a half exam um, with multiple choice questions at the end, 50% um, weighting. Um, paper two, again, physical, so you can see physical chemistry fits across both um, papers, but then this is organic. So you can sort of see them as um, an inorganic paper and an organic paper, um, but with um, physical going over um, both papers. In year 13, so this will be everyone who does the full two-year course, you get three papers, but again, you can see that Paper one is inorganic, paper two is organic, with um, physical chemistry going across both of them. Um, there's some physical chemistry that is on both, but there's some, um, like rates, for example, is only on paper two. 
Um, no multiple choice questions in paper one and paper two at A level. Um, but that's where um, they come in in paper three um, at A level. So as you can see, paper three, um, that can be any content in any of the practical skills across the whole two years. Um, so it's what they call sort of a synoptic paper, and it's um, it's sort of assessing your um, knowledge of chemistry as a whole. And then uh, slightly less weighting, but pretty much an even weighting for all um, papers. And as you can see at the bottom, um, quite a few marks will be of practical techniques and data analysis in that one. Um, whereas your sort of more content based stuff will be paper one and paper two. So how you assessed or what sort of questions will you expect? Well, they, they split into these assessment objectives. So A01, just demonstrating your knowledge, so remembering stuff, learning things, practical techniques, that sort of thing. A02 um, is applying your knowledge in a number of different uh, contexts, um, as well as uh, your ability to handle different types of data. And then A03, analyzing and interpreting um, new information and then making judgments and conclusions or um, evaluating a particular scientific process and all this will be within within your um, three different papers so you can see the weightings there um, the key thing i want you to take from this is that ao2 this is for as you can see that ao2 it has the highest percentage weight in. So if we go back to this slide, that's the applying knowledge. So you have to have a good um, knowledge of um, the chemistry, so not just remembering stuff, so then you can apply it to slightly different situations so that the exam questions will not necessarily be the exact thing you've studied, but it'll be very similar or a uh, slightly different context where you have to apply what you have learned. Um, you can also see that 20% or at least 20% that should say will contain um, mathematical skills. So if we look at uh, the A level weightings again, um, you can see that the um, AO2 again has the highest weight in for these two papers. So again, it's your ability to apply your knowledge. So remembering stuff gets you some marks, but mainly you need to get to the point where you have the knowledge so you can then apply that knowledge to um, slightly uh, unusual situations or different situations with a little bit of um, analysis. Whereas on paper three, you can see there's equal weight in and, and put a bit more in analyzing stuff, so your ability to analyze things. And again, at least 20% of um, the marks will be mathematical skills. And then practical assessments in as well, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, now that yeah, the math skills, which is what my bridging work, which I'll get to, is going to be based on. Math is a massive part of um, chemistry, and um, I'd say it's much more than twenty percent. I've never um, actually calculated this myself, uh, how much it actually is in terms of math question percentage wise, but. Um, it feels like it's a big chunk of the paper each time, and that's both papers as well. Um, so finally, in terms of what the course involves, um, is the practical assessment. Um, so you need to um, complete at least 12 required practicals um, over the two years. Now, in, in reality, we, we uh, actually do much more than 12. For example, one of the areas is you have to complete an acid base uh, titration, but there's so many different versions of uh, titrations that you can do, and they ask you so many different versions of, um, or they can ask you so many different ways of uh, completing titration or doing calculations based on titrations in the exam. So I tend to get you to do a lot more than the 12. Um, but the idea is you have to have completed something from 12 different areas, um, so then we can tick off your um, practical skills and that will allow you to get a practical endorsement. So it's separate to your exams, um, but you will get a pass or fail as well as your um, grade in the practical endorsement. So the um, 
really, if you complete your work properly and you get and you're having a good go and you're acting on feedback, you should pass this. Um, but it will be um, quite disappointing if you get a fail, like a really good grade, so you get an A, but a fail in the practical um, endorsement, and then it's you versus someone else to get into your university, and they passed it. Um, it's going to stand out, so it's definitely something you should um, be wary of. And how it's assessed is every time you do a required practical, and I'll tell you if you're doing one, I'll be looking at how you are fitting in these five CPAC areas. So can you follow written procedures? Um, can you apply investigative approaches and methods? So can you write up a practical properly and change things if you need to? Are you safe? Do you record things in a um, scientific way or is it all a bit um, messed up and you can't really find your results and record and uh, recorded observations? And the final one comes up a few times, but not as much, but sometimes you'll be asked to research a way of doing something beforehand. And you get a practical book where you have to keep um, everything um, neat and tidy and dated. And like I said, you'll get a pass at the end of it. And then finally, what um, what do I actually want you to do in terms of um, bridging work moving in from year 11 to year 12? The rationale behind this, based on a few years of teaching this and um, people coming from, possibly coming from uh, different schools, um, some people doing triple, some people getting a grade six or above in combined. Um, also, some people um, being in different math sets. Um, we're coming to a point where we're not necessarily all at the same level when we start in September. And I've noticed um, through the years that uh, some people um, just not fault of their own, um, just that they haven't been taught it because they weren't in those classes, they don't need to do it at GCC Maths, but um, there is a lot of maths or basic math skills that if you've got a, um, a decent knowledge or at least a starting knowledge of those skills um, when you start, then it doesn't put you behind um, others and you can keep up and um, it gives you a good starting point. Um, as well as as I said, some people, as well as the maths, I mean, um, some people not do triple. There's a few things that are only in triple and um, you may not have covered certain things GCC GC chemistry. So part of the bridging work um, I like to do is um, looking at uh, sort of the basics of GCSE chemistry. So what I'm going to do is set um, five lessons they're all based on some basic maths skills. I say basic maths skills, they're not necessarily basic. I mean, basic math skills needed um, to um, help you understand the chemistry calculations and the chemistry um, mathematics that um, you're going to be expected uh, to do for your exams. So we're going to look at indices for lesson one, units for lesson two, ratios, Lesson three, standard form, lesson four, and then rearranging equations or making um, something the subject of an equation. So there'll be those will be um, five mini lessons with um, an overview from me and then something to complete. And then as a task over the summer, um, there's a transition booklet. It's quite a big booklet. There's quite a lot of things to do. Um, but it's just for you to work through over the summer, do a little bit here and there, and complete it all by the time getting in, uh, into lessons in September. And then I'd like everybody to complete a spreadsheet, which I will put on Google Drive or OneDrive, um, which is just your scores for each session, because there's a mark scheme at the end of the booklet. I want you to just work through it and mark it, and then um, put your scores into this spreadsheet. And what that allow, will allow me to do is see um, as a group other areas that um, we're weaker in or certain people need some help in and I can either um, do whole class sort of recaps of those areas if the general if the average is low across the class or if there's individual work um, needed um, to be done by um, certain students because they just have to have a gap in that knowledge for whatever reason. So there's my overview of the course, plus what 
um, I'm expecting you to do for your bridging work and uh, hopefully um, you found that useful and have a go at the other lessons as they get published. Thank you very much.